Hello and welcome to Creature Texturing for Film in Substance Painter and Maya. I'm Justin Marshall and over the next few hours we'll go through the process of painting textures for our bird creature that we've modeled over the last couple of courses. We'll do this using the concept sculpt and geometry we built in the last two courses. We'll start by importing our modeled geometry into Substance Painter and preparing our project. We'll learn to quickly bake all of the maps that Painter will use to create our textures. We'll then go step by step as we start creating textures for our model to control the color, roughness, emission, and other material attributes. We'll create wood, gold, skin, claws, and any other looks that we need. Once we have our creature look completed, we'll export our textures to work within Maya and Arnold, and we'll set up a nice final render. Let's begin by looking at our Maya file and then setting up our project in Substance Painter. So this is the basically the end file of the film geometry course. And so we have the color-coded geometry here. This is based on the separations that we created based on materials. So basically just as a refresher, everything that shares a color here is sharing a material and also a UV layout. So all of these pieces are laid out in a zero to one space. So for instance, all of the body pieces go together, all the jumpsuit is on its own, the head is on its own, etc. So in this file, this is going to be 01 begin, and this is going to be a just kind of catch all start file that you can grab stuff from, but I've also exported the geometry as well. So we basically have two things in here. We have the bird creature, which is the geometry that we're actually going to be painting. And then we also, if I hide this and turn on our template layer, this is the, just the raw decimated sculpted mesh that we're going to be using to bake our textures from. And so this is just, the high res piece, uh, you can see it's decimated. And I've exported all of these pieces, at least the ones that I know we're gonna need for baking, I've exported those as OBJ files. So basically from the body all the way down to the medallion are the pieces that we've exported. The rest of these we don't need because we don't need to bake any maps for those. In addition, I've exported this bird creature as an FBX. And the FBX can be found in the scenes folder, whereas the OBJs, can be found in the data folder of the Maya project. And we'll see exactly where those are when we go to import them. So just kind of clarifying the scene file that we have here, this will be with your project files, but this is the geometry that we're working with, basically coming directly from the end of the last course. So let's jump over into Painter. So now we're in Painter, we haven't loaded anything up yet. We'll start by bringing in that FBX that we exported from Maya. Now I've already done it for you, you could certainly do it again, but let's go to File, New. And I'm going to go ahead for now and stay with the basic PBR metallic roughness template. And what we need to do now is select an FBX file from here. So we'll go to select. We'll navigate to where our files are. This one is going to be within the scenes folder of our Maya project. So just find that file and we'll say open. I'm going to change my document resolution to 2K. And before we close this down, I want you to take a look down here. In the new version of Substance Painter, we can actually use UV tiles. And so this is really important when we're working with film models. And so this particular one, we don't have extra tiles, but for instance, if you had a character's skin or a dragon or something that was all one piece and you didn't want to fit everything on one texture, you can actually use a UV tile workflow where you separate out your UVs onto multiple tiles. So you could have 10 basically textures that are combined to create this. So you could have 10 2K or 4K textures combined to create the texture for one map and Substance Painter will be able to paint over all of those tiles. And so if you're using a UV tile workflow where you've got those separated out like that, you would just check this box and then you can choose some options here. Uh, but for us in this project, we're not using multiple tiles, but in Substance Painter, you do have that ability. You also have the ability to auto unwrap some UVs. If you have pieces without UVs, you can, there's some automatic functionality there. Ours all have UVs because we did those. And so everything else I'm going to leave as is and go ahead and hit OK. So that's going to go in and bring in our geometry. And then we'll just take a quick look to make sure everything has come in. I'm going to look here on the left at a 3D view, make sure all the pieces are there. And then I'm also going to look up here in our texture set list and just make sure that all these materials correspond. So we've got the body. If we click that off. You can see the body goes away, the claws, the cowl, the, the eye interior. And then I believe the exterior is just uh, Fong 2. We can rename this. So let's go ahead and fix this and we'll call this I Outer. And you can see that. And so we'll just go through and check all of these out. 
make sure that everything is correct. Let's go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go to file, save as, then we'll navigate to wherever you're going to save your files. I'm going to go ahead and save mine inside of the project files, inside of a, a folder called painter files. And so we'll call this 01 begin, and I'll go ahead and save that. All right. So before we do anything else, what we want to do is bring in the pieces of the high res, the decimated mesh to create maps and we can create, it'll go ahead and create normal maps and curvature maps. And all these maps are used by substance painter to create some of the really cool effects that it can do. So sometimes you'll want to have detail that is only on the edges of an object and you can use curvature maps for that. And so let's go through the process of baking all of our maps. So let's go into our texture set settings. It's top button right here. And we're going to come down here and say bake mesh maps. So let's go to bake mesh maps and that's going to bring up our baking window here. And so you can see the, the kinds of maps that it's going to create over here on the left. We can also see the output size. We'll go ahead and make that 2K. And then this is where we'll put any geometry in that we want to actually use to bake. And so this baking is going to depend on what you have currently selected. So in this case, you can see we have all of these selected and you can check off the ones that you don't want to calculate for. For instance, on the pupil, we don't need to bake anything for that. Uh, we don't need to bake any maps for the eye outer. So we can turn those off. You can always go back and rebake things later as well. So we've got that selection. Now we'll go back to the common parameters. So because we're using the high res geometry to bake here, we're going to bake this in sections. So for instance, let's go ahead and turn all of these off. And I'm going to turn on just the head. Go back to common. And then in the high definition meshes, I'm going to go ahead and add one. And we're going to go into the data folder and I'm going to choose the head high OBJ. So it's going to look at this and then use the low resolution here as the target. And this will be the source. I'm going to leave everything else as is. And then we're going to say bake selected texture. And as we do this, we can go ahead and watch what happens over here. So it's baking the normal map. It's going to move on to the world space, ID map, ambient occlusion, curvature, and so forth. We'll hit OK. And now you should be able to see that extra detail on the head there. OK. And if we come up to our head, you can see that detail over here in the 2D view. And now if we go into our texture set settings, we can now see that there are maps associated with the normal world space, ambient occlusion, curvature. These are the mesh maps, and these are calculated by substance, and they will aid us in creating the rest of our actual texture maps. Okay, so now we need to go through and create the rest of these. So for instance, on the, let's do the cowl next. So we've got the cowl here. You can see those are the UVs. Go back into our texture set settings. We've got our size set here as well. You can see right now we don't have any maps, so we'll go to bake mesh maps. Size is set here. We'll now choose our cowl. And now we want to replace this. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that one out. And then I'm going to add back in the cowl. So that's, we wanted to look at that mesh instead. Let's go ahead and bake. Now it's going to be concentrating on that cowl. You can see all of those maps created. And now we get our nice detail on the cowl and all of those maps listed here. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go into bake mesh maps. And this time let's choose the body, go back to common, subtract that. And then we'll bring in the body geometry, go ahead and bake. That should be the shoulders, the arms, the legs. Hit okay. You can see that details come through. Let's do the, uh, the jumpsuit there. So we'll go back to bake mesh maps, selection, jumpsuit, and we could do all these together. Uh, but some of them you'll get, if it's using, for instance, if you do the body and you use the belt to calculate, you'll get occlusion from the belt. And I want to treat those as separately. That's what the reason that I'm doing some of these uh, separately instead of all together. So let's go to jump back to common. We'll go back in here and choose the jumpsuit. Let's calculate. So now we get some of those finer wrinkles in there that we had before. Let's do the wood. So we'll do the wood, go back to common, subtract that. And this one, we have the belt, but we also have the hip pieces. 
And so you can actually use multiple objects in here. And, uh, but I've separated these out so that we have the flexibility to use what we want and subtract what we don't want. We also have the back piece in here. So let's go ahead and bring all th three of these in. So this includes this belt, the hip pieces, and then there's a piece on the back. So we'll go ahead and bake those. So it's going to add those nice ridges in there for that. You can see on the back as well. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, the sash. So we'll do the sash, go back to common. Let's get rid of these and we'll add back in the sash. And this is going to be this abdomen sash. We'll go ahead and bake that. We'll get you those wrinkles in there. Let's do the medallion. That's going to be a dramatic change. So we'll go to selection, turn on medallion, back to common. Let's add our medallion in there and let's bake. It's going to be this piece right up here in the front. And I can see the detail on this isn't really the detail that we have on there. You can see it's a little bit different. And so I feel like it's missing a bit. So I'm going to rebake and I'm going to increase the distance. So let's increase both of these 0.05 and let's rebake and see if that helps. There we go. That is looking a bit better. So now we get that a little bit more of that look that we, uh, that we like there. And then the last one that we want to do is the claws. So we'll go to claw and I've got all the claws uh, put together on one map. And so we'll choose claws, go to common. Let's grab our claw geometry, go to claws and let's bake. All right. So now we've got our detail baked onto our claws. So you can see we've got our detail here down on the legs, just looking at the, the detail itself, the sculpted detail. So now we're ready to start setting up our different textures. We've got our materials separated out. And so now we need to start creating our textures. So we will do that next.